This video that you guys are about to watch is from my Omni Model course. If you want access to the entire course for free, yes, for free, you can get it by going to my website at allentrades.me. The link will also be in the description below. So I hope you guys enjoy this content. And without any further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so we just went over the optimal times of the week that you wanna be looking at your charts and potentially taking trades. Now let's talk about the optimal times of the day that you wanna be entering those trades. And we do that with sessions, also known as kill zones. And the way I'm gonna go over this section is we're gonna go over the four main markets that this course is covering. So currencies, commodities, index futures, and lastly bonds. We're gonna go over each one because each one has very specific kill zones to each other. Now there will be some overlap between the different markets, but there are little slight differences of when you wanna be trading throughout the day for each individual market. So we're gonna start off with currencies. So the very first kill zone or session is the Asia range, which is from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. And now many times, this range is gonna be a tighter range for the majors. Remember the majors are the pairs with the US dollar. However, the minors, so pairs with the Australian dollar, the New Zealand dollar, or the Japanese yen, can have really good movement when the conditions are right. And what do I mean by conditions are right? Cause you're gonna see this appear over and over again in this slide or in this video. Basically, if we are not in a tight consolidation or a tight range, so market, market hasn't, just been trading up and down, up and down, staying in the same range for the last few days, weeks, or even months, then Asia range can be very good for the minors pairs for those three countries. Moving on, we have London open, which is from two to 5 a.m. And there's gonna be good movement when the conditions are right. And many times London open can create the high or low of the day. And the sweet spot for London open is gonna be between two to 4 a.m. Moving on to New York Open, which is from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Now, all these times, I forgot to say this, all these times are Eastern Standard Time. Why is that? Because the dollar is king. And what do I mean by that? At the time of this recording, the dollar is the reserve, reserve for the world. So as long as that stands true, the algorithm is going to work off of New York Eastern Time. So going back to New York Open, there's good movement when the conditions are right, similar to London Open. And if the high or low of the day is set in London, then New York Open can be a continuation of that London move. Now, if London does not set the high or low of the day, then New York Open can set the high or low of the day. And many times this will happen on like a Thursday or a Friday later on in the week. Now, moving on to London close, there's okay movement. It's not going to be as tight as the Asia range, like for the majors, but many times it's not going to be as volatile unless there's some high or medium impact news event as London Open and New York Open. So there's okay movement. And many times it's gonna make the opposite end of the range. So if London made the high of the day, London close many times will make the low of the day. Now, if there is a high or medium impact news event at 10 or 11 a.m., then it can be extended to 1 p.m. So instead of 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., the London close can be extended to 1 p.m. Now I have these little asterisks, I have it next to London Open and New York Open. These are just my personal favorite kill zones as a scalper. Remember I said, I like to gravitate towards scalping. So as a scalper, my favorite kill zones to trade are London and New York Open for currencies. This doesn't mean you don't have to trade it. It's just based off my lifestyle, my sleep schedule, and just what I like. I like London Open and New York Open. Also, all of these times for the currencies, all these kill zones also apply to all the commodities. The only caveat with the commodities is that you really want to focus on New York open and London close for the commodities. You don't really want to focus on London and Asia except for oil. And the reason why oil is a good one to trade for London as well is because it's more of a global commodity. So people in London need oil. People around the entire world need oil. And this applies to Asia as well, because the people in Asia need oil as well. So moving on, here's an example of the Australian versus the US dollar. And I have this blue shaded area, pink shaded area, and the green shaded area. It is London open, New York open, and London close. 
So you can see the most volatile times are during these three kill zones with London and New York open having the most volatility and London close also having some good volatility as well. Now the low of the day wasn't exactly set in London, but you can see from the majority of the move, the low of, from the majority of them is set in London. And then the high of the majority of the move is set in London close. So now moving on to bonds. The first kill zone we're going to talk about is London open, which is two to 5 a.m. And there's okay movement when the conditions are right, but typically the range is smaller, but there are trade setups that do occur. So if you are a scalper, it is possible for you to trade London open for bonds. Now moving on to New York open, there's okay movement when the conditions are right, similar to London. And also the range is usually a little bit smaller compared to the rest of the day, but there are trade setups that do occur if you are a scalper as well. And moving on to the AM session, the best session of the day for bonds, which is from 8 to 11.30 AM. Now there's good movement when the conditions are right. And the sweet spot for the AM session is going to be from 8.30 AM to 10 AM for bonds. And then moving on to the last session, the PM session, which is from 12 to 3 PM. Usually it's smaller ranges unless there's some type of higher medium impact news during this time. So when the bond auction news report comes out, that's usually at one o'clock PM. So when you have a day like that, you want to ignore the previous three sessions. Don't even try and trade it. Wait for the PM session. That is when the best setup is going to occur in bonds on that day. And the same applies for FOMC, which usually comes out at two o'clock PM. And here's an example of the 10 year treasury note. And I have the London open, the blue area, the pink area is the AM session and the green area is the PM session. So you can see the best volatility of the day happens during the AM session. The PM session is very choppy. London open is choppy for a majority of it. There is a little volatility towards the end of the London session, but the majority of the volume, which is what I want to highlight is happening during the AM session for the 10 year treasury note. And moving on to our last market index futures, we have London open, which is two to 5 AM. I hope you're seeing a common trend. All the London open kill zones are from two to 5 AM and there's okay movement when the conditions are right. Similar to bonds, the range is usually smaller, but there are trade setups that do occur. However, unlike bonds, you can actually be a day trader on certain days for London Open. You just have to realize that you might have a deep retracement later in the day. And if you're okay with that, then you can trade London Open as a day trader as well. You can always trade it as a scalper. And moving on to New York Open, which is from 6 to 9 a.m., there's okay movement when the conditions are right. But like London, the range is usually smaller, but there are trade setups that do occur. Now, the only time when New York open is going to have like really, really big ranges is if there is some type of high impact news event at 830. So if you remember from the last video, when we went over the economic calendar, majority of those high impact news events were at 830. So those days you definitely want to be trading the New York open kill zone. And additionally, the sweet spot for the New York open kill zone is going to be from 7 to 9 a.m. It's very similar to currencies. That is the sweet spot for the New York open. Now, moving on to the a.m. session, which is from 930 to 1130 a.m. There's good movement when the conditions are right. And the reason why this one starts at 930 is because the New York Stock Exchange opens at 930 a.m. And you have to remember that the in indices are the top companies on the New York Stock Exchange and the best setups. The sweet spot for the AM session is going to be from 10 to 11 AM. And the reason why it starts at 10 is because you have the New York Stock Exchange that opens at 930 AM. So that opening range, those first 30 minutes, many times the market likes to do like some type of fake out and get the gamblers thinking, oh, it's going to go higher, higher because the first 30 minutes were going higher. And then it reverses in the other way. And we're going to be on the right side as traders and let the gamblers take their L. Moving on, we have the lunch hour, which is from 12 to 1 p.m. And the range tends to tighten up during this time, but it can move in certain conditions. Many times if there is no news on that day, so there's no high or medium impact news events on that day, then the lunch hour can sometimes have a good 
move. Or let's say we've been trading in one direction and it's Thursday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and even the early parts of Thursday have been trading one direction. Many times we can see some type of reversal to take us into the end of the week during the lunch hour. And then moving on to the last session, the PM session, which is from 1.30 to 3.45 PM. And the sweet spot for this is going to be from 2 to 3.30 PM. And it's very similar to the AM session. There's going to be good movement when the conditions are right. And as you can see, my favorite kill zones for indices is going to be the New York Open AM session, PM session. I really like the New York Open when there is a news event. When there is no news event, then I like to wait till 10 o'clock for the AM session. And then I just trade the PM session regularly. And here's an example of the S&P 500. So I have the blue shaded area, which is London Open. I have the yellow shaded area, which is New York Open. And then I have the pink shaded area, which is the AM session and the green shaded area, which is the PM session. And as you can see, there's good movement during the London session trends. And then the range tightens up just before we get to the New York Open. We have like these big wicks and it's a pretty nice size body as well. That is right at 830. There was a high impact news event that day. So you can see right at 830 volatility gets injected into the market. Then it kind of consolidates chops around and then during the am session now the algorithm is allowed to move price because remember it's all about time first and then price everything relies on time if it's not the right time of day then the market is not going to move so right at 9 30 boom now the market goes down we chop around lunch hour has pretty good volatility and then the pm session the market moves pretty nicely during the pm session so I hope you guys are finding the trend. I'm trying to highlight for each market that these kill zones is when the most volatility is going to occur. And that is it for section two. I know it was a lot of information thrown at you at once, but remember, you only need to master one market at first. I, actually, that is my advice. Master one market, learn the times of that market, learn how it moves, how it behaves, and then you can branch out to the other markets once you have the skill set in your bag. Because once you have the skill set, like I've been saying before, the opportunities are endless. You can trade any market and ideally you can just have your list of markets. You look through them every morning that you open the charts and you can see, okay, this market looks like it wants to trade nicely today. Let me trade that market. And then you know what times that you want to be a trader at for that specific. And so we have covered everything for the timing. And now it's time to move on to section three, where we're going to cover the technicals of price action and learn some of the key signatures that tend to repeat over and over again by this AI system.